Chapter 15 In the early days of fall, Will paced his hardwood floors. Puerto Ricans below him shook their heads for children woke from siesta. He couldn't go south anymore. Cass was wearing him thin. He grabbed his keys from the Irish linen on the mantel, dropped his cash-starved wallet with a corner bitten off by his cousin's dog into his pocket, pulled his boots on over soles cut from shards of the sugar jar a raccoon pushed off the refrigerator, and dropped the knobless doors the bolt behind him. Maples dropped leaves killed by autumn down on him, in the wind the factories blocked that rushed him in the alleyways between streets that angled thirty blocks into the shade of high-rises, shadowed by the Hancock and Amico buildings in a downtown darkened by the towering Sears. In the corner store he bought a paper. Nickels and dimes rang into his palm, once read by an old hippie cast demanded they see to confirm that he and she were meant to be. The woman with free love hanging out the window of her eyes warned him sternly that his lifeline branched, much like her son's, who ran with another man and brushed her cold palms back over his and refused to say more. Free love out the window. Later, Cass demanded he wash his hands with her sun, moon, and stars soap. He walked down the street. His jeans were ripped at the knee from the time he tackled her in the dirt, careless and dirty on the giving ground in April after her rehab, when they went away from the troubles of the city to get high on unpolluted air and impose on the endless, unimposing Indiana farmland. Aisle by aisle, he covered a craft store, and the late day sun blinded him on the, his way back home and west. The bag in his hand held cheesecloth, newspaper, wax, and a paintbrush. Not much he could offer the homeless man at the foot of the factory soon to be gutted and turned to lofts, who had seen him helpless on Milwaukee Avenue under the hood of the 86 Mercury Sable his grandmother had driven, and when she was no longer able, had given him, hoping for moisture in the distributor cap. The man had touched his Swiss Army knife to metal while he sat inside the car, out of the rain. The golden hair of the ghost grandmother's dog still shed beneath him and tried to turn it over. No spark. Batteries cashed, Will, 